Amen. Down my, through my 59 years of ministry, I even started before Pally and I married, I've always tried to find the mind of God when it comes to what I want to talk about. And there are certain passages of Scripture that I have gone over and over and over and over. And every time I come to them, I think, well, I've done, I've wore that Scripture out, <laughs> you know. Um, but the Lord just keeps bringing me back to, I think, some of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. And I guess someday I will be able to uh, cipher out why God keeps directing me back. But until then, well, we'll go on doing what I feel like the Lord wants us to do. And this passage of scripture, all of you, I should say most of you can quote. John 3, 16 through 18. <clears throat> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, I've read that from the King James Version of the Bible. Uh, I use New Living Translation a lot. Some people use the NIV. But I think this kind of speaks for itself. This morning, I want us to realize that <clears throat> afresh and anew, that Jesus died and was placed inside of a tomb, but on the third day he rose to make good on this one promise, that no matter what time or what place or whatever the situation is, whosoever believeth in him, will not perish. Amen. We ought to be able to say amen to that. The whosoevers of this world can rejoice today that Jesus is alive to make his plan of salvation available to everyone. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you a whosoever? Everybody is. Everybody is a whosoever. We are because that's God's plan of salvation in a nutshell. Whoever means three things, and I want to touch on these three, three things this morning, or I should say it includes these three things. Whatever wherever and whenever. Let me give it to you again. Whatever, whenever, and wherever. God's plan is available. So look at the first thought that I want to have this morning, and I don't know how I came up with this unless uh, it just came from God. Whosoever means whatever you're doing in your life, regardless of what it is, you are a whosoever. Think about that. However Jesus may find you, he can save you no matter what you're doing in your life. The gates of mercy are still available to us. Our circumstances or our whatever's does not determine if we are accepted by God. You may be with the crowd that has turned their back on God, but that doesn't minimize the fact that God loves you. Amen. If you would nod your head once in a while, I don't want to have to stop and count every time, just amen. 
John 3.16 says, It's our belief for whoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Whenever, wherever, whatever they're doing. Amen. Let's look at the story of Saul's conversion. Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest in Acts chapter 9. He requested letters addressing the synagogue in Damascus asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way of Jesus Christ. Anywhere he found them, he could arrest them. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. But something happened in his life. Paul was doing a whatever in his life. As he approached Damascus on his mission to persecute the church, a light from heaven shined down upon him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Paul was in a state of whatever he was doing. <laughs> I know that's kind of a crazy statement, but he was, he was doing something all right with his life, but it was wrong. God has a way of getting our attention when we're just doing whatever we want to do. God will let you do whatever you want to do. But he has a way of getting your attention. Saul was in a sinful state, but God had a plan for him. In Acts 1, 8, says, 8, 1, Paul said Saul was, on the, uh, was one of the witnesses as he agreed completely with the killing of Stephen. Saul held their coach while they stoned Stephen. Acts 8, 3, Saul was going everywhere destroying the church. He was doing whatever he wanted to do. But God got a hold of him. A light came down from heaven and changed his whatever to whosoever. Can you put, can you put that in your thinker? I know these are kind of complicated words, but they're really not. God lets you do whatever you want to do. But when he gets your attention, it could be severe. The second thing is whenever. Whosoever means whenever. Have you ever come across a gift card in your billfold, your purse? Say it's a $50 gift card for a restaurant. You begin to examine it and you look at it and you realize it's expired. Somebody gave you a gift card and you didn't pay any attention. You just stuck it in your wallet with along with the other cards and it expired. Sometimes we think God just lets us do whatever we want to do whenever we want to do it. But listen to me carefully this morning. God has no expiration on his gift cards. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Whenever he finds us, God can take a whenever person, wherever he is, and change his life. This speaks of time, expiration. God doesn't have expiration. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 through 19 says this, Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters, make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other daily while it is still today so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For we are all faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed we will share in all that belongs to Christ. Remember this. Today, when you hear his voice, when? Whenever God speaks. 
whenever God speaks to your heart. You may be in a car by yourself. You say, well, Brother Darrell, this is for sinners. Yeah, but it's for Christians too. To draw you closer to him. Whenever God speaks, he speaks for a reason. Amen. Whenever you hear the voice of God, and the writer to the Hebrews said, today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did and they rebelled. Though they heard the, the message, whenever God speaks, the children of Israel were in the wilderness. I don't know why it took them 40 years to learn to obey God. Do you ever figure that out? And then I say, well, Lord, how come it takes me so long sometimes to obey you? We're human. That's why at Easter time, we point to the repentant thief on the cross whenever God speaks. You say, well, Brother Darrell, I don't believe in deathbed repentance. Well, read about the thief on the cross. He came to a whenever point in his life. He came to a whatever time in his life. God pointed out his whatevers to pr produce a whenever in the very moment. He said, Lord, remember me when you come to your paradise or your, your kingdom. Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Isn't that great? Our God. James chapter 4, verse 14. How do you know what your life will be tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It is here a little while and then it's gone. We went to Fayetteville not long ago, early one morning, the doctor's appointment. And as we was going out 49, that kind of gets up there and we're up in the valleys down in here and back on the mountain. I mean, the fog was thick just everywhere, just thick. But we didn't have any where we were. When we think about life, it's like a vapor, like a fog. Coming back from Fayetteville, there wasn't a bit of fog left because it had all evaporated. Our life's like that. And you old people, I want you to say amen while I make this statement. Listen to me carefully. Our life is like a vapor, and it's fleeing away from us quickly. Boy, I got some then, didn't I? Young people sitting here, you think, boy, I've got a lot of life ahead of me. Whenever God calls, whenever God calls, whether it's young or old, I've stood beside the coffins of infants. I've stood beside the coffins of teens. I've stood beside the coffins of the middle-aged. I've stood beside the coffins of the senior citizens. When God calls, whenever he calls, it's important. So the important is today. Hebrews chapter 3, that is why the Holy Spirit says, today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled, when they were tested in the wilderness. Today. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, For God said, oh, at just the right time I heard you on the day of salvation, I helped you. Today. The right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. None of us knows when the end will come. And then the last is wherever. Whosoever means wherever a person is God can still reach them. Wherever you are, you're not far from home. It brings me to the story of the prodigal son. He decided he knew more than his daddy. He wanted in his inheritance. He wanted to go live on his own. You know where his wherever was? You know where it ended up being? In the hog pen. There are people who are raised in churches that decided they didn't want God. 
had drifted away into deep sin, got involved in all kinds of things, drugs and alcohol, and just, you think, boy, there's no hope for them. But whenever God calls, wherever you are, the prodigal son wasted his substance, his inheritance on riotous living. You can stretch your imagination to realize what that was. He got so poor because he wasted his inheritance and spent it all. He ended up feeding the hogs for a farmer. Didn't have anything to eat but the husk that the pigs wouldn't even eat. Trying to survive. But now listen. Through the power of God, he came to himself one day and said, My father's servants have more than I have. I'm going to go home. Going home. Wherever we are, God still calls, beckons us time and time again. Whosoever means wherever you go, God is waiting for you to return. Whosoever means wherever you go, He's saving your place for you. Whosoever means when you go, you're never too far to come back home. The Father is waiting to embrace. If the prodigal son can turn back to his father, then anyone can go back to God for wherever we go, no matter what. Let me give you just a few verses this morning that I think um, that are promises, and I'm going to go through them quickly. It's been a short service, so you can stay with me a few minutes, can't you? Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Everyone who acknowledges Whosoever, everyone, whosoever, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge them before my Father in heaven. That's pretty good, isn't it? Matthew 10, 39. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Mm, whosoever will. John 3, 36. You knew John 3, 36. 16, but you know verse 36? And ev anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life, and anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's angry judgment. Wow. John 4, 14. But those who drink the water I give will never thirst again. It becomes a fresh bubbling up spring within them, giving them eternal life. That speaks of whosoever will. John eleven twenty six. 26, everyone who lives in me, believes in me, will never die. Our old bodies are wearing out. We'll all go to the grave. Jesus tarries. But there's a better life ahead of us. Then in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, the spirit and the bride say, come, let anyone who hear, hears this say, come. Let anyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who desires to drink freely from the water of life come. Jesus is calling, whosoever will. Jesus died on the cross, rose from the grave the third day to make these promises a reality. Whatever you're doing in life, God wants you to live a godly life. Wherever you believe, He accepts you. Wherever you've been, it's not too far to come back. Sinclair Ferguson wrote this, and I'm going to close with this. It is misleading to say that God accepts us the way we are. Rather, he accepts us despised the way we are. He receives us only in Christ for Christ's sake. Nor does he mean to leave us the way he found us, but to transform us into the likeness of his son. Come to God whatsoever and whosoever. I need you to take these home with you. Just think about the fact that regardless of who you are, you are a whosoever. 
No matter where in your Christian walk is, you are whosoever. And the Lord Jesus Christ wants to pull you to his bosom and love you and take care of you. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blessing to us today. I pray in Jesus' name that you would take these few stambling words that I've tried to give on that wonderful passage of John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Make it a reality in our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.